Hi, my name is Rute and I'm a medical doctor. Thank you so much for tuning in. Today I'm going to talk about bacterial vaginosis. So I'm going to look at what is bacterial vaginosis, what causes it, what are some of the symptoms, how do you treat it, how can you help reduce your risk of getting bacterial vaginosis, and what are some of the complications that can be associated with bacterial vaginosis. So what is bacterial vaginosis? So bacterial vaginosis, also known as BV, is the most common cause of abnormal vaginal discharge in women of childbearing age. It is not a sexually transmitted infection, but being sexually active increases your risk of getting BV. So what causes bacterial vaginosis? There isn't one particular trigger or one particular cause for bacterial vaginosis, but it is known that when the normal vaginal flora is disturbed by different things which I'm going to talk about, then the environment becomes less acidic because you get an overgrowth of good bacteria in the what vagina. What are some of the things that can increase the pH of the vagina, making it less acidic? These are things like washing the vagina. So the vagina washes itself. So we shouldn't wash it. Even if it's with water, it will wash itself. So that will include things like douching. So douching can increase your risk of getting bacterial vaginosis. Similarly, using vaginal products like vaginal shampoos, vaginal deodorants, antiseptics, strong scented soaps around the vulva, all of these things can disturb the normal pH of the vagina. Other things that can increase the pH are things like smoking or having the copper coil. There are also other things that can increase your risk of getting bacterial vaginosis. I've already talked about one, which is being sexually active. Oral sex is another one. Having a recent change in sexual partners. Women who have sex with other women are more at risk. And if you already have an STI. So what are the symptoms of BV? You might be surprised to know that 50% of women with BV do not have any symptoms at all. Now, this doesn't mean it's something for you to worry about. If you don't have any symptoms and you're not pregnant, then you don't need treatment. If you're found to have BV whilst you're pregnant, then that is something that your gynecologist will decide in terms of the treatment options that are available for you. So if you do have symptoms, what are these symptoms? You would get an unusual discharge. So a change from your usual discharge. An unusual discharge, it tends to be thin, it tends to be watery, and tends to have a greyish colour to it. One of the more common symptoms associated with BV is a fishy smelling discharge. BV doesn't tend to cause soreness or itching. That is more commonly associated with thrush. And I've already got a video uploaded on the channel talking about thrush, the symptoms and the treatment. So I'd recommend if you haven't watched it already to watch it after this video. So you notice how I mentioned an unusual discharge. So an unusual discharge doesn't necessarily mean you've got BV. So it's really important to speak to a healthcare professional so that they can look at your symptoms and put everything together and decide on what they think you've got. How do we diagnose somebody as having BV? We diagnose based on the symptoms and our examination findings, as well as the results that we'll get from the lab. So when you've told us your symptoms, most likely we're going to ask you to come in. When you come into the surgery, most likely going to fill your tummy gently just to see if there's anything else that we think might be causing your symptoms. If we think we need to, then we might do a speculum. So a speculum is where we put a plastic instrument into the vagina gently and we have a look. Having a look can tell us a lot. We will be able to see if there's anything else that we think is causing your symptoms and we might also be able to see the discharge itself. Then we'll use that opportunity to take a swab. Now the speculum is not always needed. Sometimes we might ask you to do the swab yourself on the same day that you come to see us or at a later time. It all depends on the information that we have. So we'll use that opportunity to do a swab. 
there's two things that can be done with the swab but generally what we do in practice is we send it to the lab once we send it to the lab then the results will come back it will tell us if you've got bv or if you've got other things like thrush other things that can be done with the swab is you can check the ph of that discharge so if the ph is raised that might indicate that you have bv but the thing is a raised ph doesn't mean you've got bv there are other things like trichomonas which is a sexually transmitted infection that causes a raised ph so that's one of the reasons why we don't do that test in practice you might find that over the counter you can buy test strips which help you check the ph of the discharge which might suggest whether you've got bv or not so it's really important to bear in mind that when you buy these test strips over the counter having a raised ph doesn't mean that you definitely have bv so once we've sent that to the lab and we've got the results, if you do have BV, then we treat that. It's simple, we give you antibiotics for it and that should clear it up. The antibiotics come as oral tablets, but if for whatever reason you can't have the oral tablets, then there are options to give you a transvaginal, so one that you can put in the vagina. One of the good things is once we've treated you with antibiotics, you don't need to come back to get the swab done for us to retest to see if it's gone. We expect that it's going to go away in the majority of cases. But there are people where we've treated it, but the symptoms haven't gone. So it's really important for you to rebook an appointment if you feel like the symptoms have not gone at all. One of the things about BV is that people can get it more than once. Actually, it's quite common to get it more than once. So if you've been treated and then you find out later on that you've got symptoms that are similar to before, it's important to speak to the healthcare professional again. If you keep getting recurrent BV, then the GP will analyse and decide whether it's time for you to be referred to the gynaecologist. So what are some of the things that you can be doing to help reduce your risk of getting BV? Now we've already spoken about it. So one of the things that you can do is making sure that you're not washing the vagina at all. You will hear me talk about this a lot in my videos. The vagina does not need to be washed. You can wash the vulva with a cloth, with soap, but that soap needs to be unscented, a gentle kind of soap. But making sure that you don't use things like shampoos, you know, shower gels, strong scented soaps, antiseptics, using things like lemon, garlic, all these things will disturb the normal vaginal flora and make you more prone to getting things like BV as well as thrush. Other things that you can do include things like not smoking. Having a diagnosis of BV can increase your risk of other things. So for example, if you have BV, then you're at an increased risk of getting sexually transmitted infections like chlamydia or HIV. The other thing is BV can cause complications in pregnancy. So if you have BV and you're pregnant, then your gynecologist will discuss with you on treatment options. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this video useful. If you have any concerns around some of the things that we've talked about, you know, you've noticed that you've got unusual discharge or unusual smelling discharge, it's really important to book an appointment with a healthcare professional. So that can be through your GP or through a sexual health clinic. If you've already subscribed, thank you so much for subscribing. And if you haven't, please do subscribe and please do share. And don't forget to press the notification bell as well so that you're notified every time I post a new video. Thank you so much and it's bye from me.